Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Indeed, welcome to a very important episode. I can't believe I haven't done this yet on this channel, but today I want to talk about Skyrim. <laughs> yep, Skyrim on the Xbox 360 is one of my favourite computer games ever made. Uh, it's, it's undeniably an important computer game, but also personally, it's, it's, a, it's a crucial computer game. Uh, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim really came at the right time for me. Uh, and uh, first of all, it's, it's not remotely controversial, I think, to say that this game is amazing. Uh, people around the world, reviewers, gamers, universally, people high, hold Skyrim in high esteem. And yes, today there is a bit of a joke about how Skyrim is everywhere. You know, if you look hard enough, you're probably going to find a, a copy that you can play on your Walkman. It's been released in so many different formats. Uh, but that's mainly because the game is brilliant and people will buy it and rebuy it uh, on their Xbox 360, on their Xbox One, so on and so forth. It, it is a marvellous computer game. And so there's really nothing I can add to, to, the, to the praise that this game has received in the past seven years. But I think I can talk a little bit about why this game is important for me and, and what I love about Skyrim. Uh, and also how Skyrim really, really helped me, actually. Uh, but first of all, before that, it's worthwhile just saying that initially I wasn't a big fan of the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion had been a big success and was was a game that you could play on the xbox 360 and a friend of mine recommended that i i give it a go and i think this would have been 2010 probably that i tried out the sort of the classics edition of elder scrolls um oblivion it was the version that had all the dlc in it and it uh it, it was well it, it was it was really being hyped up by my friend. He said, this is the most amazing RPG you'll ever play. Play it, play it. And so I gave it a go. And within a couple of hours, I kind of put it down again and never picked it up because it felt like I was playing a computer game. Now, obviously, this feels like I'm playing a computer game. I mean, if I go up to this log here, press A to use Lumber Pile. A, there you go. Um, but Oblivion had a sort of a sheen to it, a sort of a plasticness to the textures of, of the game. Uh, the colours were sort of unreal, and I don't mean that in the sense of the Unreal Engine. They sort of felt, well, less, or rather say more, like a computer game than I wanted them to be. Uh, the, the menu system was clunky, the gameplay mechanics were awkward. Uh, for example, in this uh, version of an Elder Scrolls game, you can go into third person and run around in a circle, and it all kind of, you know, makes sense. You feel as though you're actually running around on the ground. In Oblivion, I noticed that in third person in particular, which was kind of how I wanted initially, how I wanted to be able to play combat, uh, it felt like you were sort of floating above the ground. And when you turned in a circle, you actually sort of turned on the spot. You sort of, you sort of, you didn't, your legs didn't move. It was, it was you sort of just, it was weird. It was just weird. Um, and, and that, all of that coupled with the fact that in Oblivion, the monsters leveled with you. So, no matter what weapons or armor or magic you got hold of, it almost always felt as though you weren't really making much progress in terms of how powerful you were. Oblivion just rubbed me the wrong way. And so I, I figured that was it. I figured that was, you know, Oblivion was just a PC experience. It was a game that's probably best played with a mouse and keyboard. Clearly, uh, the console just wasn't for me, and I kind of left it there. But, uh, but in 2011, I had, uh, I'd recently got married, so I'd moved back to the northeast of England, uh, having been living and working in York for a while. Um, I say moved back because I, I went to uni up here in the northeast. And uh, I was living with my lovely wife in our flat in Wall's End, and I was looking for a job. I was basically between work, between jobs, as they say. And, uh, and, and, and while I was looking for, for jobs, I was also playing computer games to try and keep my spirits up. 2011 in the Northeast, frankly, to this day in the Northeast, um, it's, uh, it's a difficult place to find work. Um, incidentally, I absolutely love that there are so many books to read in this game. A uh, diff difficult place to find work following the economic crash in the 2007, 2008, 2009, ongoing. Um, 
the jobs market was awful. So I was I was getting a little bit downhearted, a little bit depressed. So uh, I thought I figured I'd try playing computer games, and it was around about that time on eleven eleven eleven, which is an amazing release date for anything that Skyrim came out, and the hype was was big. The hype was real. Yeah, people were uh, were 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 saying how this game was going to revolutionise. Um, well, revolutionised what people expected from a Western RPG, uh, and to a certain extent, it did. It uh, oh, there's a glitch. Actually, speaking of glitches, look at this. If I <laughs> let's fast travel to uh, let's see, let's fast travel. No, let's fast travel over the mountain to Fort Amol. Or Amol, there you go. Um, to a certain extent, it did, even though there were glitches and things, as we're about to see. It did. It, 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 the scope, the graphical fidelity, the uh, the storytelling depth, the fact that there were so many documents and books that you could read in such a wonderful way, gameplay mechanics like lockpicking, really shaped what people expected and would come to expect from, from open-world RPGs. Uh, yeah, even, even to this day, even though there were games like Witcher out there, people still measure themselves really against Skyrim. Um, and so the hype was really big. There we go, look, see? There's a horse. Now this horse, whenever I fast travel, there's a horse with me. <laughs> I don't know how I've managed to make the game do this, but the horse is part of my fast travel entourage, apparently. Um, and it's not my horse. I didn't buy this horse. I just got on this horse once and got off it. And, uh, and now it's with me wherever I fast travel. Anyway, um, the hype was real. The world... Uh, uh, that was being promised was was tremendous and uh, and I figured that this was the time to, to, to try another um, Elder Scrolls game and I remember after a couple of hours of playing my first campaign uh, I was I was only uh, on sort of the second major um, uh, the second major uh, quest so getting the, the horn um, uh, of Jürgen Windcaller from Ustengrav, um, a, a sort of a, a, a yeah, his tomb up in the north of Skyrim. I remember t putting down the, the controller, turning to my wife and saying, this is like Zelda for grown-ups. And, uh, and at that point, Skyrim was very close to, to, to out, out doing Zelda in my mind. It was going to become more or less my favorite game and probably my favorite game series. Uh, Games in the Zelda series had sort of become a bit stale, a bit predictable. You know, um, Skyward Sword, for example, even though it had wonderful one-to-one -one sword mechanics, and 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 really, having gone back and replayed Sky, uh, Skyward Sword, I I really do appreciate that game. It wasn't really what I wanted from an open-world game at that point, and uh, and and so Skyrim at this point uh, in 2011 felt like this was the game for me. This was the series for me, Zelda for grown-ups. Now really what I meant by that, and what I've come to understand that I meant by that, was that Skyrim was an RPG, an actual role-playing game. Uh, and uh, I've always loved role-playing games. I've always loved, for example, um, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books, one of my first exposures to that sort of gameplay. Uh, the uh, the sort of stuff that you can get up to in the Warhammer universe. The, um, the way that you can craft characters and and uh, and stats and things, you know, uh, have, have always appealed to me. And Skyrim is doing that for you, but without the need to have all the maths and all the you know, sheets of paper. Basically, Skyrim is your DM. Uh, the, you know, the, the the game programmers are allowing you to 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 be a character in this world. And so I've played as a you know a horrible person. I've gone around stealing and killing. I've played as a very honourable person. Uh, in this instance, I'm playing as a wood elf. Here she is. Um, and uh, just, oh, look, see, my horse is, he's gone. I told you, he's not my horse. He doesn't wait for me. <laughs> um, it was role-playing that, 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 that I was suddenly really enjoying. And that was something that Zelda had never quite offered to me. And Zelda doesn't. It's not designed to. It's an, it's an action-adventure game with RPG elements. You know, you, you do grow your character by doing quests and by getting certain items and abilities but you are ultimately playing Link's story uh, and actually ironically I think at the time 
my wife was crocheting for me um, my Link hat, like a Zelda artifact, uh, on the couch, and that uh, you know she could see that I was I was absolutely loving it as well. So um, Skyrim came along at just the right time to to lift me up when I was looking for a job, to offer a world of possibilities, and that world is so immensely satisfying uh, that I mean, well, for example, actually, if I if I head over here. And uh, across the river again. And uh, actually, tell you what, tell you what, I'm going to fast travel back to Fort Amon. And I'm going to try a certain path, see where it takes me. But it, it's, it's the potential for, for crafting your own stories. If, if, if you don't discover something, it remains undiscovered. There's nothing really that, that drives you in certain directions. And that's also reflected actually in the gameplay mechanics. I love how you get better at the things that you, you practice. If you fight with your with, with one-handed weapon, you'll get better at one-handed fighting. If you uh, use destruction magic, you'll get better at using destruction magic. So on and so forth. So, so <laughs> there's my horse again. Um, now there is a downside to this sort of uh, this centrality of you as the protagonist, and that is that often the game feels as though the world is revolving around you. Now, yes, that's kind of appropriate for the Dragonborn. You are the first Dragonborn in hundreds of years, apparently, to have been born, uh, and so you, uh, you you are an important figure in this world, especially in this province of Skyrim. But the fact that you can simultaneously be the head of the uh, the thieves uh, in um, oh was it was it was the place called the thieves in uh, the thieves in Riften. The fact that you can be the 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 uh, the leader of the 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 mages uh, and the magicians in Winterhold is it in the winter in the college. Yeah, of winter hold uh, the fact that you, that you can hold various prominent positions in this world you can essentially become the person who's the most important person in this world does undermine a little bit that kind of r real ish realistic storytelling um possibility because basically uh there's, there's nothing you can't do and that's maybe that's something that, that, that maybe the next Skyrim, uh, the, or sorry, Elder Scrolls game, should include is the fact that if you choose, for example, to be a thief, you can't be a mage. Maybe you can't be, you know, if, or rather, sorry, that's, I don't mean that in terms of the character construction, because because you, you can choose, you could choose in Oblivion to be a certain type of character. I don't mean like that. But I mean, if you choose to behave like a thief, then maybe you wouldn't be welcome in the Mage's College. This kind of thing, perhaps it might might help that along it might mean that you're not you know you're not the jesus as it were of skyrim but i love that you know we've just gone up up some stairs and here we are in a tomb and in the tomb oh here's ah! oh, time to start. There's a around here. gold deer a necromancer can i help him slimy uh, who's in the tomb Val's Baron. My family has never really seen eye to eye with him. He's finally gone off the deep end. Okay. He's gone in to defile our family too by using our ancestors for his filthy dark elf. Whoa. Filthy dark elf necromancy. Went in after him, but she hasn't come out yet. And I don't think I can take him by myself. Let's go. Great. I'll unlock the door and meet you inside. Then you can lead the way. Okay, cool. Let's go. Oh, what I might do is I might just get my dog to wait here. Where's he gone? Hello. You wait here. He has a a a, 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 um, a habit of getting killed in tombs. <laughs> um, but we've got up some steps. We've gone into a tomb. We've we've had an interaction with someone who, who we never would have met had we not gone up those steps and into that tomb. It feels as though you are living, as it were, in this world. And that's really the big difference for me between Zelda and Skyrim. Is that in Zelda, I'm being... Before he does more damage here. 
enthralled by a world and being, especially with Breath of the Wild, being impressed by the beauty of that world, by the, the, the bigness of the story. But it is nonetheless Link's story and, and I don't mind that. I mean, that's always been the case. Uh, and they just sort of confirmed it really. Uh, you know, they've solidified it with the fact that you can't change Link's name, for example, in Breath of the Wild. Uh, in all, all other Zelda games, you could, you know, uh, call Link, in my case, Mac, for example. Um, oh, search earn. Okay. Um, whereas in Skyrim, you're not playing someone else's story. You are creating the story by playing and I I love it and, and again this comes back to this whole love of, of RPG and uh, and the fact that eventually I I, I would I would dis rediscover this in the form of playing D&D &D with friends in the past past few, a couple of years uh, this way of playing games has become very important to me and who, who knew uh, I certainly didn't know at the time that Basically, I was practicing D and D while I was playing Skyrim. I also love this game as an archaeologist. I love that there's so much history that's unspoken. There's history that that's revealed through just being observant. And uh, for example, in the tombs, in the reading of the books, in the um, uh, in the way that characters have certain prejudices, especially for example, if you play as a as a dark elf, and you try and go to um, Winterhold, uh, you're not you're not particularly welcome there. Uh, is it Winterhold? Let me just again check the map. World map. Windhelm, sorry, not Winterhold. Windhelm, and you're not particularly no. welcome there. I can't Why? Um, I let's get a torch out. So there we go. Where is she? Oh, there's Antagna. Oh, let's have a look. Amethyst. Let's lose her body. What's down here? Secret room deeper in, where they bury disgraced members of the family. Maybe that will get us into the main chamber. Okay, well this way then, here we go. Um, yeah, so I, sorry, I appreciate the fact that, that, that we're exploring often places like tombs. Uh, and actually, uh, as an archaeologist, I can tell you that, that the, the way that the, that the designers have constructed these tombs, even, even frankly references to things like draugas, these are references to, to Viking monsters, you know. Um, the uh, the way that, that that you get a sense of actually I'll put the, get my torch out again you get a sense of the uh, the history within the game the fact that, that there were people here before these people who made these places that you're 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 exploring in the depths I find that deeply satisfying as well and it adds to the sense of adventure uh, and and I think that is because you feel as though you are in a world that exists independent of you. Blimey, that's a drowger here. You're adventuring in someone else's world. And after all, in real life, don't we all live in someone else's world? There we go. Now, uh, in terms of the archaeology and my love of the artifacts, I actually took that a step further. And, uh, Wah! booby traps, darts took that a step further and a couple of years ago got hold of um, a, a real world scepter, a little sort of uh, coin from the game. They're everywhere, basically they're the gold pieces in, in Skyrim. Um, I love that, that this sort of stuff is being produced, but also the books from this game uh, are being, uh, being printed in real life. You can get them, um, for example, at Forbidden Planet in Newcastle. Uh, there, is a, there, is a, there is a bleeding effect with Skyrim. Where um, the 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 oh the incredibly Im impressive uh, world that they've created is is bleeding into our our own reality, and that again that's another reason why I love this this game. It is simply excellent. 
Now, I don't know what we're going to find in here, apart from more Draugr, and maybe that Necromancer. Oh, I need to recharge my axe. The axe of Whiterun. Let's see, charge it with a lesser soul gem. There we go. Set the guy on fire. Now, incidentally, in, um, in Old Norse mythology, Draugr were the... Uh, were undead sort of uh, ancestors, as as here, who would do things like, like they would ride on top of your house in the middle of the night, so the creaking of the beams of the house uh, in the wind might be said to be Draugr, who had risen from their tombs and were, uh, were haunting you. Bear would show the way. Okay. Well, a dragon, a bear, a moth. So let's well, pull a dragon chain again. Oh, the bear chain. <sighs> it's kind of like you're Indiana Jones. <laughs> um, I also, uh, just coming back to, I suppose, gameplay elements, I love that um, that the magic system is particularly well developed so obviously as dragonborn you get to learn shouts i've learned a few shouts on this playthrough so far uh but you also get to to become uh, uh, more and more adept at magic the more you use it so i'm trying to become better at, for example using destructive magic so i'm going to use some flames for a bit okay Okay, here we go. I'm expecting a powerful necromancer. Ashnag Dimbadul. Oh, can't see him. Where is he? Oh, rats. I better use some use a potion. Uh, minor healing. There we go. Potions of minor healing. Never, never pass up a chance to pick one up. Oh, that's a lot of Draugr. And we've leveled up. Oh, rats. Need to not die. It just brings a smile to my face. It really does. Okay. Let's see, what should I level up? Uh, I'll level up on health, I think. And actually, I think I will. I've already done two destruction, so I shall level up my heavy armor. Well fitted, 25% armor bonus? Yeah, go on then. There we go. Excellent! Oh, more Draugr! Oh no, here you go. Plus Rodar is a, an excellent shout, isn't it? Okay, that's the Draugr Overlord, almost dead. There we go, and now just the Necromancer. Oh, and there we go. Oh, there we go, cool. You're welcome. Leave me to see So 750 gold, Helgren's chest key. Let's get my torch out. There we go. Excellent. Okay. And let's search Val's the necromancer. Take his key. Search the overlord. Ancient Nord Great Sword of Cold. Yeah, go on. That's some gold. And potion of minor healing. Always good. And there we go. You know, we've we've just come across an adventure where we've helped to free a family from an evil necromancer, uh, cleared out the family tomb, and at the end we get a load of loot. 
it appeals to all the best uh, tropes in adventures. And here we are, back outside. And there's Miko, waiting loyally. <laughs> Follow me, Le Miko. There we go. Guys, I love Skyrim. It is, it is as I say, it's the, it's the game, it was the right game at the right time for me. And um, and I'll, I'll keep on playing it. I think I'll always return to Skyrim. And, and yeah, I definitely need to, to, to crack on and actually dive into The Witcher uh, and, and some other games that, that I have in my collection. But Skyrim is incredibly special to me. And, and hopefully today I've, I've explained a little bit of why that is. Obviously I haven't even scratched the surface of this game in terms of, of what's, what the content is. We've just done one little, little encounter. Oh, make the liar! The people of Skyrim are more open-minded about certain things than people in other places. Cool, Mike. He's a recurring character, I believe, in the Elder Scrolls series. And I think we'll leave it there for today. Uh, this game, simply brilliant. And I'm so pleased that I've finally had a chance to talk about it a little bit. But as I say, there's nothing I can say that, 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 that other people haven't already said. And, uh, and there's nothing that we could do in one video that really communicates how, how magnificent Skyrim is. But surely to goodness, if you're, if you're watching this, you've at least heard about Skyrim, if not played through for yourself. But for me, this game will always be that, that, that little beacon of light at a time when I was, I was really, really quite down in, in the dumps looking for a job. And, and uh, I look forward to the next Elder Scrolls game. So yeah, following that uh, terrible experience with Oblivion, Skyrim just converted me. And, uh, and what an RPG it is. As ever guys, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.